Good afternoon, Bishal. Okay, so yeah, grab your wine, take some cheese, and we'll start in two minutes. The world evolves. Over the years, our lives have changed. Microsoft Dynamics GP helped manage your business for many years. Enter receivables transactions. Pay vendors. Enter payables transactions. Enter customer cash receipts. Welcome to the, oh, by the way, I love it that you are already participating. That's what we would like to, so interrupt us anytime. If you have any question, feel, feel free to ask. So welcome to the 2023 Optimus Roadshow Trinidad edition. My name is Rodolfo Gonzalez Llanos. I am the Chief Operating Officer for Optimus. I have over 30 years of experience in, in this industry. 18 of those years, I worked as <clears throat> Dynamics ERP lead for the Caribbean and all of Latin America. Then I was promoted to the position of director of all Dynamics, so including not only ERP, CRM, Power Apps, all, everything under the umbrella of Dynamics for the Caribbean and Central America. Two years ago, when I left Microsoft, I joined Optimus, and I joined it for three reasons. First, the vision of the company, looking for transforming our customers with leading technology. But beyond that, because of their industry focus, their verticalization, that's something that when I was in Microsoft, I was always insisting to our partners, don't be generic. You need, really need to understand the needs of your customers, where they're located, and not only geographically, but also the, the industry that they work on. And third, because of the level of professionalism of our resources, we have offices in Trinidad, the Caribbean, in Trinidad, in Jamaica, and Puerto Rico. And we have the honor to have here our uh, BP for sales and marketing, who is uh, our PhD doctor, uh, Bishal Ramnarin, who is based here in Trinidad. Some of you already know, because we have several customers throughout the Caribbean, about Optimus. But let me show you a little video on who we are. Optimus wants to be your trusted advisor. That means that not only having the best products available worldwide and being knowledgeable about those, and not even having great solutions that we do, but at the same time, having your specific needs, understanding your industry. For that, we have focus in certain verticals like consumer packaged good, grocery, uh, um, hospitality, um, and several others that you have just saw, seen over there and that we're going to be covering uh, part today. But mostly what we're going to be discussing in this particular uh, event is the migration of Dynamics GP to Dynamics Business Central. Which, with tools that our CEO will be talking about, were called uh, hybrid to make the, the process a lot easier. And for that, as I mentioned, we know the we have we, our company comes from Dynamics GP, and several years ago we made the transition to Business Central, and this is what why we have so and we have developed those tools that our, uh, our CEO will be talking about. 
I've already mentioned the offices we, that we have here in the Caribbean. And also we have in, in the US where we have our main office in Colombia, Mexico, uh, Peru, and, and Argentina. And we have a whole ecosystem that you just saw throughout the Americas and, and in Europe, okay? Now, I already mentioned about Dr. Bishar Ramnarin, our heart and soul of Optimus, Dr. Uh, uh, our CEO, uh, Hector Negron, and who will be talking, and I invite him to come here to the stand to take it from here. So thank you very much. No, that's mine. Yeah. So it is, this is a hybrid event. Hey, Alan. Uh, this is a hybrid event. So uh, we also have an audience coming in online and the audience, we're having a wine and cheese. So it's been a long day. I need a, a little bit of wine here. So in our agenda, what I want to cover is History repeats itself. We're here because of history. I really want to take a look at it. And I know a lot of you here and who are online have been a part of the Great Plains, Dynamics GP, Solomon, SL community for a very long time, right? And, and we're in the middle of material change. And part of it, as is tied back to history. So I'll take you through a very quick uh, background of where we were when you entered and invested personally and with your organizations where we are today and when everything's going forward. Uh, there's different options of migrating. I also want to compare Dynamics GP and SL in a neutral standpoint uh, we did do a white paper over 100 pages long does not exist microsoft never did it where uh, we put a gp consultant and a business central consultant side by side and they went through all the functionalities took screenshots and tried to do a a comparison uh both systems and you know that's a project that took a uh, couple hundred hours we invested in it and we did it a couple of years ago, uh, even before Microsoft made their announcement, which I'm going to share now. I'm going to explain what's uh, high grade and, and, and planning our, our journey. But there's a preamble here where we are, and it has to do a lot with history, where we're going. So if we take social media, fake, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, uh, and we compare it to other populations around the world. By the way, India just surpassed China as the most populous nation in the world. You'll see that we are all here, part of, outside of being Trini, from the ones that we're here, and we have people from the US and other Caribbean nations online. We're, we're part of the Facebook nation. We're part of the WhatsApp nation also. And just think that Facebook and Google they own a couple of these social media companies. Add that, and we just saw there, it took the telephone 75 years to get to 100 million people. It took Angry Birds 45 days to get to 50 million people. And it took ChatGPT two months to get to 100 million people. So when we start analyzing and taking a look at that, and you know, it's also digital transformation is where we're headed, where we are, what tools our employees need and house today, what they expect. We go through generations, baby boomers, uh, I'm an ex-gener, come down to millennials, millennials, we, did, uh, we divided in two different segments. And uh, the, Z, uh, the Z generation, uh, it's where the expectations are, are, are very different. Uh, how we communicate with our, our customers, of your government, our constituents, uh, back and forth, and how we're going to work and collaborate with them has, has forever changed. So it's not about when 
we go through digital transformation, uh, COVID accelerated all of that, is how we go into it and make sure that we're going into it in, 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 in a correct manner. Uh, this video was done by, and the research was done by our internal team. So this wasn't a video we, we copied from, from anybody else. And, you know, we're just trying to communicate the, the, the path that we're, that we're living in. And a large part of Business Central and, and Dynamics 365 is providing those tools so we can go through this digital transformation. GP and SL were built 40 years ago. Uh, they're great systems, especially in, on, on the finance and, and, and the base part of it. I personally still love the system. I still tell a lot of customers, you don't have to run to upgrade or change to Business Central. Uh, you know, it's, it's a path and it's particular to each organization. Uh, they're, they're still great systems. So going back to history, uh, a lot of you I know here have been around Microsoft and Dynamics as a client, some of you as partners uh, for a very long time. And we've gone through all this terminology and AX and GP and Accepta and Great Plains and SBF, Small Business Financials and GP Accounting, and I can go on and on and CRM and on-premise and on the cloud. I could keep on going here for a while if you guys want. And it's just taxing and confusing, right? Uh, the base story behind all of this between 20, the year 2000 and 2002, under Bill Gates, there was a vision. Satya is fulfilling that vision. I joined Microsoft because of Bill Gates' vision. I hate Steve Ballmer, by the way. I think the guy's an idiot. Uh, but it was Bill Gates' vision. His vision was, I'm going to put Outlook, and I'm going to put applications behind it, and I want users to use Outlook to do their day-to-day -day work, right? And they're going to be calling the accounting system and, and everything else. It's just one universal uh, user interface. Think about a universal code. That's something new in Microsoft. I'll speak about that in a second. We're already transitioning there. Uh, so these acquisitions happened. They went through the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, right? Uh, and Doug Burgum, who used to be Steve Ballmer's roommate in college, little story, another story, Great Plains, used to be an Apple product. We only ran an Apple. It was Doug Burgum who moved it uh, to the Dynamics, uh, to the Windows realm. Uh, was in charge, and GP flourished for a period of time. Around 2006, Microsoft does the branding changes of Solomon to Dynamics SL, Great Plains to Dynamics GP, Navision to Dynamics Nav, and Accepta to Dynamics AX. Uh, Microsoft did try to bring GP as a number one or the flagship ERP. That cost Doug Burgham his job. Uh, uh, Kirill came afterwards. And, and uh, you know, Crossroads started going back and forth. One year it was one system. And I don't know about you, but I assume you get a partner, a Microsoft rep every year, two years coming over to you and say, no, now you have to go to AX or to FinOps or, or this and that. So it's just been taxing the, the back and forth. So. Well, what we're doing here is taking through history where we are right now. Microsoft finally settled into, and this announcement really made everything concrete in May 2023, May 2023 of this year. Finally, in writing, Microsoft says we're in, the, in about two years from now, they put the date, in two years from now, now it's less than two years from now, we will no longer sell GP and SL. So I don't know about you, if Toyota says, I'm not going to sell a Corolla anymore, that means, you know, uh, spare parts, everything else is not going to be available. They're retiring a model. So it is official. It is in writing. It's not salespeople speaking anymore. You know, the, you know literally the writings, I was going to say on the wall, it's on the web. Uh, but that's where we are right now. And this is not new. That's why Optimus, we invested in, and Dynamics 
NAV uh, Business Central about five years ago. We acquired two firms and we got into this business a long time ago and we started already transitioning customers a couple of years ago because around five or six years ago, everything started moving to the cloud. So does anybody know here how the name cloud came about? So I'll tell you, uh, my first cloud project was 20 year 2000, 22 years ago, when it used to be called ASP, Application Service Provider, and somebody changed it to SaaS, Software as a Service, and it, you know, somebody else called it Collocation, then somebody else called it Shared Services, and then Subscription Services, and I can go on until a very confused customer said, ah, oh, it's up there in the cloud, right? And it actually became the cloud. Artificial Intelligence, my first Artificial Intelligence project was in the year 2000, no, and it was not with the Department of Defense in the U.S., uh, although my mom's a retired Army colonel from the U.S. Army. But it was actually, uh, it was a project in Haines. We, you know, back then it was called Advanced Supply Chain, and it was really algorithms and a lot of computing in the background. So same thing, a lot of these technologies have existed for a very, very, very long time. It's just rebranding it so we as users can assimilate or memorize the, the, the name a little bit more. But what really happened, Microsoft tied with SL GP Make It Web, where the architecture that's under GPNSL really wasn't made for the digital transformation era. Uh, what had happened was that other acquisition, the least favorite child in the house called Navision and AX, their architecture was done differently in Europe. So, and the reason why we haven't heard a lot about Navision and AX in the Americas is when Microsoft did the acquisition 2022, and I know the stats because I used to work there under Rodolfo, by the way, he was my boss, now I'm his, so um, revenge, <laughs> jinx. So, uh, so basically uh, what had happened, there were about 50,000 GP customers in the Caribbean and and the Americas, a couple thousand in the UK and Ireland. And there were like a thousand Navision and AX in the Americas. It was the flip side with Navision. There were about 45,000 Navision customers in Europe and a couple of thousand GP in Europe. So that's why we haven't heard a lot about that. But Europe is a little bit similar to the Caribbean where there's a lot of nations, right? And then these nations have different parliaments and prime ministers and they have different taxes and they have different currencies. Now it's a euro, right? But before different currencies. So the underlying architecture of Navision was made more flexible, was made more intercompany, multi-currency. I think you're starting to get it. So, so, so that was the architecture. So, you know, finally Microsoft said, you know, well, you can't fit a square peg in a round hole. And that's when they, they took Navision and AX and they said, no, these are going to be my race horses now. And they started investing a lot of money in technology. So I don't know if you guys remembered something called Office, and now it got rebranded to Office 365. And now Microsoft changed the branding to Microsoft 365. But Office, Microsoft changed it to Office 365, and it was their first step into the cloud. And it's making Microsoft billions per month. So taking advantage of that branding, Dynamics Nav got rebranded to Dynamics 365 Business Central. And then AX got rebranded to Dynamics 365 FinOps. And Microsoft CRM, which had become Microsoft CRM Align, got rebranded to Microsoft Dynamic 365 CRM and then customer 365 customer experience and now sales and marketing 365. So Microsoft has pulled this together, but Satya did something Steve Ballmer had it done before, which he really weaved everything together. And it's he's really making it speak today. When I open up my teams. I don't need to open up my ERP. We use Dynamics 365 Business Central in-house. We eat our own dog food. And we also use Dynamics 365 CRM in-house. 
And we also use Power BI. So I have teams open, I'm working, I'm chatting, I'm doing calls, and I need to check our ERP system. I click on an icon inside of Teams and it opens up. And the other day I was saying, oh my God, this was Bill Gates' vision. It took, it took you know, it took them almost 20 years, but you know, we're 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 finally here. And now we're also been using Copilot for the last month. So where's GP and this whole ecosystem? I, I love visuals. Actually, all these slides, we've done them. This is taking information from our brains here and, and putting it there. This is not adopted from, from Microsoft. So if you see there, I went through the whole process of that was the old branding. This is a new branding. Somewhere in between, Microsoft added artificial intelligence, advanced workflows, Power BI, AI, embedded machine learning. What happened? GP and SL stayed behind. They weren't brought over to the right side of, of the screen. So where are we right now, right? How does this business central compare to everything else? And I call Microsoft and they ask me, what are you using? No, I'm using finance in my ERP. No, then call finance, you know, FinOps. FinOps is is another name of a product. It's not both products have GL, AP, AR, and everything else. So the big difference is AX, which has now been rebranding Accepta Dynamics AX to 365 FinOps is the bigger ERP. Uh, if you want to run that on-premise, you're going to need 26 servers. Let's put it that way. Uh, it is at the SAP and Oracle level. Uh, it's obviously on the cloud, but you're not going to implement this in less than 4,000 hours. You're not. And it's not a complex implementation where you're putting 4,000 hours in there. So this is more in it an SAP, an enterprise type of application. So most of us that are on the web and that are here, we're either uh, government or we're small, medium enterprises. And for the US, medium means companies with revenues up to a billion US in dollars. So that's basically big companies in, in the Caribbean also, right? So. That's for very big companies. Where does Business Central fit in? Where GP and SL fit in? It's more a mid-market application. That's where we see Sage. Uh, that's where we see Acumatica. That's where we see NetSuite and other ERP systems. So that's why a transition or an upgrade, if you're going to FinOps, which there's a lot of confusion with the branding, that's the wrong product. Uh, if you're an SAP and an Oracle, enterprise versions, you take a look at, at FinOps. If we're mid-market, this is where we work with Business Central. So where we are now, right? Uh, first thing, you don't need to rush. So let's take that anxiety out. Uh, we There is some time in there. Second thing is, I have to say this, don't put money in GP or an SL unless you have to. Every time you invest in a report, uh, every time you invest in some additional functionality, right? This is something that most probably will not upgrade or or migrate over. Uh, uh, so you know that, and 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 I'll continue going a little bit more more in detail. So where are we with support? Where is Microsoft headed? So on the on-premise version, so you have two options with Business Central. You can go on-premise or you can go on the cloud subscription. And on-premise, Microsoft's doing a swap right now for GP. So whatever you had in GP, you can swap it for Business Central. So you saw the video at the beginning where there was the Toyota Corolla from the 80s. Literally, GP and SL is an 80s software. And then you, know, you saw the new one. When was the last time you went to a dealer? You went with your 1980 Corolla with 200,000 miles in and you gave them the keys and they gave you a brand new Camry. So this is a swap and I'm not being dramatic. I'm not exaggerating. When you compare both products, you say, wow. Uh, so there's some incentives there from Microsoft that they are giving back to, to the community. Where are we with support? The bottom line, if you're in 2015 and before, you basically are out of any 
Microsoft type of support. If you're on 2016, you are an extended support. That means hospice or a lifeline at this point. If you need anything from Microsoft, there's no bug fixes. If your system crashes, you Microsoft's not going to help you unless you pay them about $400 an hour uh, with no guarantees. So uh, basically, that's extended support. Uh, extended support more is a warranty you're paying to get the new version for free, that trade-in I was telling you about. 2018 R2, as you're seeing there, no more new sales. So GP is discontinuing sales. This is possibly the last version of GP out there. And uh, Lights uh, Enhancement was increased last year. Those of you who already paid this year, you already saw a second increase. And uh, those of you who haven't paid Enhancement, there is an increase. And so prices are going up for SL and for GP on your yearly enhancements. And it's now coming into extended support or hospice support or lifeline support. So right now, if you go to Microsoft's uh, website, what you'll see is there's a GP website, click on it. When you go in it, you see upgrade, you'll see Business Central. Uh, uh, there's a link to Business Central in there. So uh, there's a saying, if it ain't broken, why fix it? Right? GP is, is, is a great system. You know, same thing uh, Kodak said. Uh, same thing to, uh, Toys R Us said. Uh, same thing many of us have said. Now, at the same time, GP, Microsoft had four iterations, four of a web user interface. First three of them failed miserably. Last one, you can use it, but it's limited and it's not true web software. For something to be a true web software, it has to be responsive, has to have different characteristics. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not there. So GP never transitioned to, to the web world. So I already talked about uh, you know, GP. It's official, it's in writing. Email us, we can send you. Uh, I did a personal letter saying goodbye to GP. And uh, I have links to all of this directly to Microsoft's website. And I do explain that there with supporting documentation. So just email us and you know we'll more than gladly uh, supply the, uh, the letter. Unlock savings, you're getting the free trade-in. If you decide to move to the cloud, there's a very aggressive promotion from Microsoft that expires now in June that Microsoft will give you a trade-in credit for uh, your transition to the cloud. But understand something, it's not only the software. When you're on the cloud, you get additional cybersecurity from Microsoft that, that we can provide. We all know that ransomware and viruses, it's its almost weekly now, right? And we open up our emails, hey, there's an invoice notice from Optimus. I don't know that Optimus person, and you just got hacked, right? So it's, 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 it's happening. You get disaster recovery from Microsoft, you get telemetry services from Microsoft. So telemetry means Microsoft is monitoring your servers for data corruptions, performance, whatever. So it's a little bit of proactive maintenance Every single month, Microsoft installs a new mini update. Primarily, it's bug fixes. Every okay. six months, you get a medium update, additional functionality for the system. So this means no upgrades. Uh, I don't know about you, but having, you know, every four or five years, now I have to do an upgrade. I have to retrain. We have to spend weekends working. Uh, we have to go through this. We just went, I mean, it's it's a hassle. So once you're in this bandwagon, uh, there's no more upgrades. Your culture changes, right? So the new change you just saw there, Angry Birds, 45 days, 50 million people, where every month you're improving something. Every six months you decide, I want to turn on this functionality. I don't. So before, on average, customers are running a 
five-year cycle where I upgrade. Microsoft launches a new version of GPSL. Two years later, another one. Oh, they're going to phase this out. Fifth year, let me start looking at doing an, uh, an upgrade again. But what happened in those five years? You were still using the functionality of five years before. Well, this is okay even before because technology was moving slower. Now technology is moving a lot faster than before. So you say goodbye to upgrades, you get AI embedded, you get Power BI and all the cubes embedded, and it's embedded within the screen where you don't even need to run a report. Uh, let's say you're an accounts pay uh, receivable manager. Uh, you log in with your credentials. It's role-based. It opens up your credentials and you start getting all these little Power BI reports and snippets right there on your screen for your day-to-day -day work. Stay connected everywhere. With Business Central, you can download Android apps, iPhone apps. Uh, I think you get four or six different type of each person, users that you can use on different devices. It's responsive. You can use it on a mini iPad, a large Android laptop, on your desk, you can work from anywhere from uh, with it, either using the app or logging into the application. Uh, for all, all of you who are Apple lovers, yes, you can use it in Safari, you can use it in Apple. Uh, security, what I mentioned. Efficiency with innovation, Microsoft's plugging that in. I'll be sincere, we're, our upgrade revenue is down 50% this year. It was down 50% last year uh, with this. So our business model has completely changed as a consulting company. So as a consulting company, we're investing more in helping customers adopt new technologies and be more efficient than being, being there on the phone. Oh, so SQL doesn't work. Oh, so you're getting an error in that report. So the whole dynamics of how we're working with customers has completely say, uh, changed. Say goodbye to upgrades, which obviously I I, I already discussed. <laughs> so a little bit of, it is a wine and cheese. I'm gonna have a, a little bit of wine here. So, uh, you know, there's changes definitely on the user interface. What are we seeing there? That's the Office 365 portal. The applications are there, so very tight integration. We're also seeing that screen, a little bit of Power BI uh, embedded in there. We have a sh machine learning in the system. Let's say you're in accounting, you're working, and all of a sudden you get this little pop-up that says, hey, Steven, you're going to run out of cash in two weeks if you don't deposit money in your bank. So you're not having to run reports to get insights or you're uh, purchasing, you have the, the role-based purchasing. Somebody, sales guy sold a whole bunch of this, and then all of a sudden you're, you're working, you get you know this little pop-up, hey, by the way, you're running, I don't know, out of Kellogg's boxes, right? Uh, you need to put an order to your supplier because you, you reach your minimum. So you're having machine learning, you're having AI working with you without even having to run a report or depend on a human being thinking and processing data. Obviously, this is not perfect, right? The, the AI or the machine learning, or as I said, algorithms, it could recommend, it's always up to the human being to adopt or not. That's what I talked about cash flow. So Walter Deming, he's said that without data, all we have is an opinion. Uh, Walter Deming is, the father of Japanese economics. He made Toyota what Toyota is now. He's one of the co-authors of TQM, Total Quali Quality Management Methodology. One of the most prestigious awards, business awards in the US is a Walter Deming Award. So my first BI projects were early 2000s for a small, medium customer. It was minimum fifty, sixty thousand dollars just in software to start out. You added consulting, you were looking at a hundred fifty thousand dollar project for a small BI project. Now we have this thing called uh Power BI. It's I don't know, Vishal, eight, ten bucks. I forgot how much Power BI is per month. Ten bucks or so. ten for the pro license. Yeah, you do get free licenses depending on 
if you're an E3 or the different, I'm not one of these Microsoft licensing uh, gurus, right? But, uh, you know, you do get a free usage license that you know, has a little bit less rights when, 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 when you have a certain level of office licenses. Uh, but 10 bucks per month and includes the hardware to do all the processing. It's, it's, it's really not that bad. Or the same thing with the cloud with Microsoft. If you decide to go to the cloud, you don't have to buy servers. You don't have to buy SQL server licenses. You don't have to buy Windows licenses. It's just one payment for Dynamics 365 Business Central, which Microsoft is heavily discounting right now if you're current on your SL and GP maintenance. Uh, I had a customer in Jamaica. They had over 100 SL licenses. We moved them to BC, 100 SL licenses. They got this for zero dollars. They're still paying the same maintenance that they paid in SL. If they would buy the software again new, the maintenance would be about 45 to 50 percent per month more. So that's another thing. Microsoft respects what you were paying in the past for SL and GP, even though it costs more now, and 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 it's all that. Mark Twain said that when you have more than one clock, more than one watch, you'll never have the correct time. So we're moving now into an era of one source, one truth. In order to get data out faster, the more we have in one system, the easier it is to get real-time data for analytics, for, uh, for, for everything else, right? And I told you about main screens. For me, my main screen now is Teams. There's another thing with Dynamics 365 Business Central Cloud, you get unlimited free users uh, that are kind of like a read only through teams. So if you have teams, you have office, everybody within your organization can view screens that are a, a full user sends over to them. So Microsoft's really trying for everybody to, to collaborate. So, you know, AI, the cloud. Uh, I ran into a lady around 11 a.m. out there in, in, in the lobby. This happened today. She's, she wasn't coming to an event. She went to order coffee over there, but the Marriott Cafe was closed. So I told her, if you want coffee, come take it for free. We have an event in there. You know, we have this coffee station. She said, no, no, no. I said, I'm, I'm the CEO. Come, <laughs> right? So, you know, she came in there and she asked me, what's your event about? And I, said AI, hey, she said, I'm 783 years old. You know, I'm scared this is gonna take over the world. And I said, no, this is not the Terminator. So, uh, uh, and and it is, and, and, and we had that, that, that conversation, but when the car came out, you know what people said about the car? A carriage without horses, that's not gonna go anywhere. People laughed at it. Uh, I started working with self-checkout, SEO, before COVID, before COVID I would, talk to CEOs and owners and businesses in the US and the Caribbean, literally people would laugh at me when I said SEO. I said, Hector, you don't know how Jamaicans are. Hector, you don't know how Trinis are. Hector, you don't know how Puerto Ricans are. Guess what? Everybody's jumping into self-checkout right now because there are not a lot of employees out there. So then, you know, people started talking before COVID about, you know, the little drive, uh, humanless self-driving, Delivery, I, you know, I, I commute between Puerto Rico and, and Miami. I live in both places during the week in Miami weekends back in Puerto Rico. And I'm driving down Wynwood where I sleep, right? Then all of a sudden I had to stop and I'm like WTF. There was one of these little cars over there delivering. And I'm not, you know, this is Miami, right? I've always been seeing this and it's, yeah, no, I'm from Silicon Valley. We're testing this in San Francisco. Yeah, trying to drive through Miami streets, and and that's a real test. So, and I know we all, most of the people here, we have family, we have friends in Miami, so we can relate to this. But it's just scary, exciting, uh, uh, etc. So there's all this confusion. When when do I need to move? Listen, what I tell customers: if you just use finance, right? and you really don't need to upgrade this year, and your auditors with this extended support will approve and say, hey, you're on support, uh, there, there's no issue, and you really don't need to do heavy integrations to another system or something else, 
you know, write out GP a little bit more. But if you're a customer, let's say in certain industries, so our biggest reference customer there in retail grocery and, and hospitality restaurants, and they needed to invest in a new POS, et cetera. So it made sense for them to upgrade GP now to take advantage of a lot, a lot of these things. So this is really a case by case basis. You know, it's not about anxiety. Uh, it's really a rational analysis. And part of the analysis is, is, is where you are, right? Uh, you know, but this is a time to start analyzing it. And that part, it is time sensitive. Don't wait two years from now. I can tell you that promotion that I said that Microsoft heavily discounts if you're on-premise and you go to the cloud last year. What Microsoft did was if you paid $3,000 a year in your SL or GP maintenance, give me $3,000 and you get a year and you get what you had in SL on the cloud with everything else. And this year, they said, no, 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 we were giving it too much away for free. Now you have to pay something, right? Uh, you can trade it in, but you have to pay something. Next year, we don't know what it is in writing. And it was on my timeline over there. And this is for sure. Microsoft already announced they're raising the prices of GP enhancement and that's how they did it. For those of you who, who, who are buying additional GP users and SL users, they already raised the prices. They're going to raise them again, even on a discontinued product. What's the logic in that? Because for me, that's illogical. Is it abusive? Yeah, it is. Hey, Microsoft. But uh, but at the same time, they're trying to, I, I can't say incentivate, they're trying to push customers to finish moving over. Wall Street, so you know, the value for a subscription dollar is 6X to 9X. The value of services or consulting as 1x. So every time Microsoft converts an on-premise user to the cloud, Wall Street uh, awards them by increasing the value of that dollar in business. So think if you did $10,000 in maintenance a year, Wall Street valued that as 10,000. If you do $10,000 in subscriptions a year, my, uh, Wall Street is valuing that between 60 Sixty thousand to ninety thousand dollars. So all of this is math. It's logical. It's 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 rational. Is it fair? No. Nope. But uh, uh, are there caveats and positives behind this? Yes. Uh, are people today getting a pretty good deal swap? You remember Corolla trade in? I would say definitely yes. So uh, something we're doing is. Uh, Rafaela, are, are we up in app source with GP2VC or not yet? Okay, so we already have six or seven apps up on Microsoft App Source. Microsoft App Source, it's like saying uh, the Apple uh, App Store or the Google Play Store where you download apps. This is more you download apps for businesses. We already have six or seven apps certified uh, up there, so validated by Microsoft. One of them is the Caribbean localization or you know managing of taxes and withholding and et cetera for the whole Caribbean. We have Caribbean landed cost or advanced landed cost. So uh, for those of you who had GP and had or are using national accounts, it wasn't on Business Central. We already built it and we have it up in, in Business Central, but that's US, that's that's Caribbean wide. So you know step number one, we can sit down, dedicate a couple of hours uh, you know, go through this. Uh, there's some, uh, I wouldn't say e-learnings, but there's some video materials we ask people to see beforehand because the amount of requests we're getting is 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 is, is, in, is incredible. Remember, we started this five years ago. Microsoft just announced this now. Uh, so, and we help you go through this. We can estimate, you know, the cost. Give you high level, very high level estimate. For those of you who really want something to deliver to the board, uh, you want you 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 want a map. Uh, you want to go a step further. We do have a methodology. Uh, we do. There's deliverables. There's documentation. We do a, a functional requirements design document. Uh, we start documenting areas of improvement, etc., that you can implement. 
So in consulting, we call this the A and D, the analysis stage and the short step methodology. So this is actually consulting, it's not sales. A salesperson can't do this. We have to bring in a consultant, right? And uh, so this is where we really need to bring in a consultant, do a big deep dive. Uh, it has a cost of 10,000 US. If you then do the upgrade with us, because I'll be sincere, we started doing this a couple of times when it really became popular. And uh, some people were then using it to do their own RFP. So, uh, you know, uh, so that actually raised some bells and said, wait a minute, this adds value. So if you want to buy our services, go ahead. There, there, There's a cost. If you decide to continue investing in us, we'll credit some of that money back. And then there's a third step. It doesn't have a cost because it's, really uh, let's say tailored fit where we do number two but we also do uh, and we work with re-engineering companies and partners also in there like Martin uh, who's here and I've worked with Martin in, in the past uh, we can help you re-engineer take a look at your processes so you can work with somebody like Martin We'll sit down with Martin. We'll do a gap analysis. We can do change management in the process. And uh, we can really take it uh, to, to the next level. So, and there's various processes there. And, but, you know, that's more business consulting, re-engineering uh, mixed, uh, uh, with, mixed with the system. And in between, this is not black and white. There's hybrids. You know, I've had people who did number three on their own. You know, they hired a consulting firm like Martin's, and then they gave us all the paperwork. You know, we we did the analysis, we did the FRD and did that. We have people who already have a lot of documentation that they are FRD and said, hey, we already have all of this documented, whatever, can you guys give us, you know, uh, an orientation, take us through the process, do the software estimate, work with this, and, and, and can you help us with the budgets, right? So, this is more segmented and are looking for a, a, a logical approach. For a long time, Freshmark managed its business using Microsoft Dynamics GP and NCR Counterpoint POS. Despite their efforts, they found themselves constantly chasing efficiency and flexibility. But that changed. Enter Optimus, the catalyst of transformation. After a meticulous evaluation, Freshmark embraced a game-changing shift. They welcomed the partnership of LS Central and Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, a dynamic duo reshaping the business terrain. With LS Central, Freshmark's journey transformed into a symphony of success. Imagine seamlessly integrating a full-scale supermarket under one compelling brand. That is exactly what we did. The new system empowers Freshmark with lightning-fast efficiency. Tasks that once took hours are now at your fingertips, freeing you to focus on what truly matters. LS Central is not simply unified across technology platforms, such as POS and ERP, but also across multiple industries in food and retail. This is unified commerce to the nth degree, says Jorge Machado, CEO at Freshmart. Let's revolutionize your business together. Are you ready to rewrite your story? So uh, they had GP forever. They were using they were using all the modules in GP. Their CIO actually was a consultant in the past. Actually worked for me in the past. Uh, that's the person who called me. So I mean, they were internally experts in, in GP, but they were looking for the one source, one truth. Uh, they wanted to jump on the bandwagon on the train of digital transformation. Uh, they needed to invest in better systems for planning, forecasting, replenishment. Uh, in their case, that's how they, they pay their project. I know a lot of you are are not in, in food and beverage or hospitality who are here and, and over there. But this company has, before COVID, they have 400 employees. They sell more than before COVID now. They sell more than during COVID. They have 350 employees now. They had seven delis, seven supermarkets. Now they opened up two restaurants. They opened up a new 
manufacturing facility. They got into brewery. They got into canning uh, beer and, and cider. And they reduce employees. They're using bots, delivery, pickup. Uh, they're connected to give me a bite, uh, which is like, like uh, Uber Eats, uh, Instacart. Uh, just in AI-driven replenishment, they reduce spoilage by 75%. They reduce stockouts by 75%. So that means when you go in a Nile and you pick up a vitamin or you pick up anything, now it's there. Before, a lot of it, they were restocking. But more importantly, they reduced their safety stock or their inventory, right? Uh, islands, we have to buy more than we need just in case we run out. But these guys are organic, no preservatives, no GMO. So while we go to a regular supermarket and cornflakes Kellogg's can be on a shelf for three months, these guys have to get rid of it in three weeks. So almost just in time inventory. So these guys reduced a quarter of their inventory. They're selling more. They're stocking out less and they're throwing less stuff out. And all of that could not have been done without artificial intelligence which remember is a fancy word for algorithms and, and advanced computing. So uh, with that said, that, that concludes, I'll be available for additional questions. The audience over there, you can type in your questions and we'll also uh, take them at, at the end of the presentation. Rafaela? So thank you. So this used to be like a two-hour presentation, but people were, were dying, and you know I had to cut it down uh, significantly. So any questions right now? Questions, concerns. You want to do your questions or concerns one on one? I don't know if if on the web we have any questions. No questions. That means I did a, an awesome job here. <laughs> No take or so, I'll be available for any one-on-one -on -one questions in the back. Yeah. In terms of what people are talking about, I don't know what the whole system is, but I don't know what the system is. And the reason, I mean, that's what they have to talk about. But in terms of what they have to talk about, in terms of the price, they have to talk about the entire people. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So first thing, the grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. They're all doing it right now. Uh, they're all increasing on premise pricing and they're all increasing subscription pricing. Uh, that's, you know, that's uh, you know, definitely a fact there. Uh, customers can still stay on premise. Uh, so the licensing goes, so I'm going to separate two terminologies, subscription and on premise, right? A subscription and cloud uh, also, so, and perpetual. When Microsoft says perpetual, it means you buy, it's an asset in your organization, and then you pay a yearly fee, which is a cost. Right, so that's perpetual. Subscription means, and we're not talking about technology, right? This is Finance 101. Subscription is a fancy word for software for leasing or renting. So you're leasing or renting, plus there's some value added services behind that lease or rent. So think about leasing a car in the US, right? Where you lease it and then the dealer tells you, I'll change the oil for you every three months. Believe me, he's not doing it for free. He already jacked up the price for that, right? So so one is subscription is renting, leasing with some value-added services. That's a cost in, in an organization. The other one, you can capitalize it uh, and then depreciate it, and then you have a, a, a monthly expense. Uh, licensing 101, I've worked with Oracle, I've worked with JD Edwards, with SAP, Microsoft, overall, you know, my last 25 years. You take the cost of selling a software plus about three year maintenance, you add all of that up, enhancement. You divide that by 36 months or 30 months, 
and that's your subscription price. It's 90% uh, of the time that formula works. Now it's changing a, a, a little bit, but that's the whole formula. But what happens after those 36 months, software company is, is, is making a kill, right? So, but you don't need to take all of this cash flow out. Now, so that's licensing. Where you run the software, we're using two different terminologies. We're gonna be using on-premise. That means the hardware is mine. And then cloud where, and it's within my four walls. And then cloud is the hardware is not in my four clouds. It could be in Trinidad with Digicel. That's the cloud. It could be in the US, it could be in Colombia, it could be in Russia. I wouldn't put it in Russia right now, but uh, we, we can have it anywhere. So what combinations are you allowed today? You can have you can buy the software on-premise, or you can switch from what you have on-premise to the on-premise BC version. Literally, you don't pay anything, and you, you pay the same yearly uh, maintenance fee you were paying. And you can run that in your servers inside of your four walls, or you can go to a hosting company here in Trinidad or Colombia and anywhere, rent out allocation, rent out space. Software is yours. So it's perpetual licensing, but you're running it on the cloud. I have customers who are doing it that way, right? So again, most customers, I can tell you right now, in the Caribbean, and then, yeah, we know about the US and Europe, but in the Caribbean, more than 50% of the customers, when they're upgrading, uh, I'd say about 65%, uh, uh, they're going cloud. The other 35, I had a case where, well, the customer was moving from Sage. It wasn't really a GP upgrade, but a couple of six months before, they had set up a brand new server room with everything new, and Hector already owned the server. Servers have to depreciate it. You know what? I'm going to run this on premise for the next three years, and then when this is depreciated, I'm, I'm going cloud. I had another customer who's government, and then that customer said, legally, I can't put my data on a, on a, on a U.S. server. So what we did is we put them, uh, they took perpetual licensing, and we put them on a server in Colombia. Uh, we have alliances, and that's one of them, right? Uh, so, uh, and that way, you know, it wasn't on a U.S. server, but they were still cloud, and you know, that particular country just doesn't allow your server. But what's ironic, their email is Office 365. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I have another customer in Jamaica where uh, they, they that's a customer I sell with over 100 licenses. They, they moved over uh, on premise. And then they said, you know what? I want to evaluate that, evaluate an Amazon Web Services. They evaluate Microsoft Azure. And then we have uh, private hosting in California, a very secure location, Department of, of Defense, the U.S. Army holds from there, so you can imagine it. And uh, they did an evaluation of all three, latency, costs, et cetera. They ended up getting the software perpetual and, and putting it over there. Freshmark, they had GP on the cloud, on the public cloud somewhere. The stores were running on premise, so now they went over here, and now they're moving. Uh, well, they they moved BC on premise for the last three or four years. They had moved it on a on a public cloud in the U.S. and they had Business Central there. Now they're switching to the, you know, the Microsoft cloud version, which is really moving to subscription pricing. But they got the deal where they were paying I don't know ten thousand dollars in maintenance a year. Now they're paying ten thousand dollars for the hosting, you know. So they got the the, the very nice deal. So they moved over now to the Microsoft Cloud uh, because you know uh, the good deal that they had there, and you know they were already working cloud. So you know it, it it depends a lot on 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 the scenarios and and everything else. Uh, some people want to have an asset, their balance sheet, and depreciate it. Others want to expense it. What's this is not conspiracy theory. You know, my job also as an analyst is try to look into the future. And I did bet on Navision five years ago, and now it's paying off, uh, uh, BC. But what's happening with Microsoft, Oracle, and everybody, they're just going to push everybody to the cloud. 
So uh, are gonna they make it mandatory in the next three years? Yeah, not really. Next five years, most most possibly. So sooner or later, you know, they're gonna say, you know what, you're either on the cloud or or, or go somewhere else. And it's not just Microsoft; it's it's all of them. But you said you have a question. Yeah. Uh, someone else in the in the Zoom event has had a question. What type of business in business center must be for? What type of what? Of business center. Is the same of business center? Uh, for. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's an excellent question. So, remember. The reason why Microsoft chose Business Central is because of its architecture. Sorry, so, can uh, you repeat the question? Oh, yes. Okay, awesome. So, the question is what type of industry is Business Central more suited for? So, we all know SL, yes, worked in the public sector. Excel was excellent in construction, project based industries, and that was its core. GP was more professional services with some ISVs. It worked well in construction and project management. Uh, also public sector, uh, GP was excellent. And it's, it's good, it's solid distribution software. GP was terrible in manufacturing. Uh, and it's architecture because in GP you have to develop with dexterity, which is uh, we, we still have dexterity programmers, but it's the old way, old mainframe type of, of programming. So it was never, and the whole base of it, not being truly multi-currency and intercompany and all of that, GP always had obstacles in really becoming an industry adaptable solution. So one of the other main reasons why Microsoft adopted Navid Dynamics Nav, which became Business Central, was, and that's why you're seeing so much Europe at the beginning of my slides up there. Literally, I've gone in on planes and I've been traveling, backpacking through all Europe, looking for technology. Uh, the US is the best in the world in, in technology, Silicon Valley, Oracle, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, I could keep on going, Europeans, are the experts in taking US technology and putting automation and really automating the heck out of processes on, on a system. So that's why I went to Europe. So there's about 30 or 40 years of R&D in different industries. Uh, BC is good in public sector. Uh, we do have a construction vertical. Uh, we have retail, LS Retail, excellent. It's the only, ERP retail system that coexists in one source code that I've seen out there. The most I've seen is people taking an ERP system, taking the sales order module of it, that's really for invoicing wholesale and trying to convert it into a point of sale. Uh, it's very good for leasing and renting. Uh, we have verticals in there, consumer packaged goods, hotels, hospitality, I said public sector. Manufacturing, it has a great manufacturing, uh, food and beverage, uh, utilities. We also have a very strong utilities system. Uh, we're implementing Caribbean airports right now. Uh, we've also implemented airports in the US. So, and you know, a lot of it, yes, it, it's inside of Business Central, but a lot of it also uh, has come from other partners, pharmaceuticals. It's also very good pharmacies. Uh, we're implementing one of the biggest pharmacy chains in the Caribbean right now, kind of like a Wal uh, Walgreens type type of operation. So, what is it all about? Uh, uh -huh. A little about the programming languages of the Dynamics GP and Business Central, and yep. also the Business Central programming language of Power Apps. Okay, so in GP, how many of you are GP here? Raise your hands. How many are SL, Solomon? Okay, so about half and half. I think we have a lot of GP people on, on the web. So GP, so first thing, Solomon, Microsoft abandoned it a long time ago, a little bit after the acquisition. 
I don't know if you knew, but the only Microsoft product that's not supported by direct Microsoft employees and direct Microsoft employees, uh, Microsoft's supposed to do their own R&D at SL. This happened years ago. So what happened is right now, who's doing the R&D and support? A company called Plumline, which is owned by, by the guy who sold Solomon to Microsoft. So that's a pretty sweet deal, by the way. Uh, so you have that, uh, you know, right now. So programming, you, you know, programming a little bit more. And Microsoft really has not invested in, you know, Power Apps, Power BI. I mean, there's connectors in there, but you don't get what, what were you getting in the newer versions on GP. I can speak more about GP. So on reporting, you have Excel cubes, you have SSRS, you have Smart Lease Builder, you have Report Writer, uh, and then you have some other ISVs. Uh, we a lot of we do jet reports. Uh, we have a lot of jet reports in, in the US and the Caribbean with GP. Then in programming language in GP, you have dexterity, you have VBA, you can use Power Apps, but the integration is not much there. But then when you integrate, you have integration manager, you have eConnect also. So it's 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 a pretty big tool set with Dynamics BC. Uh, there's a language used to be called CAL, but under the new framework, it's called AL, subject-based programming, super easy to learn. Uh, it, it's, it's just beautiful language. Uh, you have an internal tool, which really kind of like a smart list builder on steroids, uh, uh, which is called Rapid Start. Uh, it, it's an internal tool. Uh, there's a couple of ISV tools. We use Cosmos for analytics, but uh, that's the only one we're using right now in reporting, but everything else is Power BI, which is now Microsoft standard. Microsoft is doing the cubes themselves. Uh, Microsoft is monthly basis. Remember, I told you that, that that cadence, and then every six months, you're getting more and more reports on, on, on Power BI. There is a report writer in there, but for me, report writer and BC, just like GP and the other year piece is just outdated uh, uh, reporting. It's, it's it's there because it's it's basically there, uh, but it's a lot more advanced. Power Apps, tightly integrated. Teams is tightly integrated. We're already using Copilot with uh, with Dynamics. So I'll let Vishal explain Copilot so we can bring a, a training up here. So what's Copilot? Copilot is. Oh, oh. So I'm just going to give you a, a, a quick one minute right now on what the pilot is, and then we'll close off. Because I don't really want to drink and eat something. Oh, well, then I'll hand back over to Hector. Um, so Microsoft Copilot is basically um, Microsoft's new AI, just like ChatGPT. But it is it is strategy between the background, yeah. to be quite honest. That's why Microsoft paid ten billion US uh, to get rights to ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you have a front end portal that's connecting back into the main engine, right? Um, it connects to Outlook, connects to Teams, it connects to your Excel, PowerPoint, any Microsoft product that you have. It can connect back into that, and it gives you that interface. What it does, for example, we were using it today. Um, we were part of the global pilot. Yes, sorry. We were part of the global pilot. <laughs> right? I, I, I think Hector really considers himself Trini, you know, guys. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right? Um, so, yes, it was launched yesterday globally. Uh, we were lucky enough to be part of the pilot program. And we were actually testing it, and it's rather very, very easy to use. You simply type in a command. I am looking, um, type uh, a letter, type a dismissal letter, type a hiring letter, type a welcoming letter. And on the side, it starts to populate. There, of course, it'll leave the name blank. We are pleased to announce that you have been selected for, and it continues. You do not like what it proposes. Choose another option, starts doing another one, but it keeps it on the side. 
on Teams, for example, we have a meeting. Say you have a meeting with 20 different individuals. You have your regular team call, right? Your Monday morning call, as we would like to have it, right? What this does, it summarizes every single piece of information which was said on that call, right? For example, Hector, myself, and Rodolfo had a call. Um, we can we all know who spoke the most, right? <laughs> Everybody looked at Hector automatically, <laughs> right? We don't need it, <laughs> right? But what it also did in Teams, for example, it gave us a chart that stated by colors, visualization, of course, the bits that Hector spoke, the bits that Rodolfo spoke, and the bits that I spoke, and then. You can actually click on that and it'll give you all of the data, all of the um a summary of all of the data that you basically said. All right? Customer service. Let's say yeah. I write an email to you complaining. Oh, customer service, let's say you receive an email, customers complaining refers to invoices, refers to this and that. You hit copilot. I'm gonna call it the dude. The dude writes the whole answer back to the person in an eloquent, nice political way. Obviously, you still need to read and read and send, but it, it, it's made to do work. You're in Excel. You have a table of all these numbers. You can shadow it, and then Copilot can do analysis behind it and provide analysis uh, back, back to you. Uh, and CRM, uh, we use CRM. <laughs> I mean, it's it's I, I we we can keep on going and going and going. So it's supposed to well, it is because we're using it right now. Uh, you know, all that mundane, repetitive task. It's 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 automating it. Uh, we're using AI. A lot of the videos you saw here, the person who was speaking was really wasn't a Terminator. It was AI, right? Uh, a lot of the images you saw here. Uh, we use AI to do it. Uh, my son's around back there. A lot of his university papers, he uses AI to do them right now. <laughs> but uh, but that's a, a, a different story. Uh, but it's, it's I mean, it, it, it's a competitive edge uh, uh, out there right now. Yes. Awesome. Cloud and on premise, yeah, we do we do have customers in that scenario, but they're primarily in retail, and it's a special permission licensing that we have. So on the store level, we are in the Caribbean. We do get hurricanes, right? The internet, uh, so cable and wireless, and digital. If you out there, can you please give us adequate internet one of these days? So, uh, but the reality is, for example, a store. You can't be connected 100% of the time. You lose connectivity in a store, they don't sell. Customer goes somewhere else. In accounting, you lose connectivity for an hour. You know, people are going to drink coffee, this and that. They're going to come up, and then they have to catch up. right? But you do catch up. When you're in a store, you don't. So we do have scenarios where uh, we have Business uh, Central have running on site, on a location, location, on premise, and then it's replicating back to, uh, to a server. But for nor normal uh, normal work, uh, you know, if, if if you grab the micro, I mean, subscription and perpetual is different. But yeah, but if you, if you can't synchronize uh, to two servers, uh, uh, you, you you do need to have it. So right now, I just checked. I just moved to a new home, and I have a Starlink antenna, uh, and because there's a new development, it's up in the mountains. And I'm using Starlink. And I was checking something for a neighbor. And then I hit there and I said, wait a minute, Trinidad has Starlink now. And Jamaica has Starlink and Barbados has Starlink. So right now for $90 a month. Uh, and how Starlink works, it is satellite. But we're always afraid of satellite because when it rains, it messes our signal. But their satellites are lower. They're more in the stratosphere. So it's a lot faster. Uh, rain and climate doesn't affect that much. It's, it's we're, we're be, and that's what Ukraine is using right now, right? Um, in a way, believe it or not, Elon Musk has really helped the war efforts more than anybody else, and 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 Ukraine, and it's it's 
It's internet, it's Starlink. From the perspective of licensing, so if I have a division mm -hmm. and I am a client user, and the client does not want to, the information on the mm -hmm. Now, with the current license regime, um, I can't do that. I can have well, a group of them. Yeah. Um, but going forward, so if I have two businesses, then I say, well, mm -hmm. I purchase, so I want to implement one on premise and one on the cloud. Mm -hmm. How is that seen? That yeah, that is seen as two. Yeah. Okay. But remember, you can you can get perpetual licensing where you buy it, and then you can still run it inside of your servers, right? So, but yeah, but having some users or a division, uh, you, you would have to license. One of them would be subscription, and then the other. But you can also have on-premise and subscribe to it, but you just need to do two different implementations. Or you can copy and paste one, to the other so you're still paying a monthly fee without buying the, the licenses and you can have one on a local server and the other one on the cloud any more questions no okay so let's drink and eat <laughs> thank you really appreciate it